All right, welcome everyone. We've got our second quarterfinals for the Dota 2 Canada Cup. I, of course, I'm going to be your host, Niz. Thanks for joining me. We've got uh, we've got Wheel Wreck While Whistling, aka Wheel, going up against the North American Rejects and hopefully a DDoS free North American Rejects. As uh, they unfortunately ran into a little bit of DDoS issues in their second game in the group stage. But it all got sorted and fixed before game three, so hopefully we won't have any issues with that. Zeus. But uh, this is this is looking Radiant like it is going to be a good picked. match between these two teams. We had we had some pretty damn good matches last night. Um, Summoner's Rift did did manage to take it 2-0, but uh, it was some good Dota to watch. There was uh, some good trades going back and forth between. Uh, between the two teams, but I, I thought both teams played well. Summoner's Rift definitely were the better team, but, um, but yeah, Ehug definitely played well uh, as well. And it, it made for some really good Dota to watch. Five and, seconds uh, remaining. You know what? S uh, the current patch has gotten, 6.83 has gotten a little bit of hate Radiant recently because of some pick. of the games going really, really long, and we've got 6.84 coming right around the corner. I, I've heard Friday is when it's coming. Don't know for sure. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to hopefully get through the quarterfinals before pick. that patch comes. But uh, it's definitely going to shake up this tournament, that's for sure. So it's going to make it uh, even more interesting than it, uh, well, than, than it already has been. But uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to talk too much about the the, the changes coming. We're going to try and stick with the current patch. I've, I've been Watching different things and listening to different pros, and I love doing theor crafting Ten myself as well. Remaining. But I'm not going to get into that this cast, so we're just we're going to try to focus on 6.83 here. Five seconds remaining. But uh, we've got, the, uh, like I said, the North American Rejects who uh, ran into some DDoS issues, but they finished two and Radiant one. Unfortunately, they lost that game because of the DDoS is issues. But I think they definitely would have finished three and zero oh in their group, and they're going up against Wheel that went two and one, but. They lost to Black Sheep, which didn't manage to win another Dyer game in the group. Um, but Wheels also the runners up from last season, so so uh, they're definitely uh, definitely very very capable, and I think we should have a really good match here. Um, Ten seconds remaining. Some 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 things that I kind of noticed Five seconds uh, as remaining. I was casting the the stuff in the group stages, and that was. Where has Ix Mike Reserve been? Time. I feel like he hasn't had an impact at all in any of the games that we've seen from Wheel. I feel like Ix Mike just hasn't—he hasn't been a hero. Radiant he hasn't been a player in these games. Ban. He's always been struggling. He's never really come out and made some plays. You know, he—he he always he always gets you know hate for you know not being that skilled or whatever. But honestly, he's a very skilled player. Ten and seconds we just haven't seen a game from him where he's just been, you know, making those Five plays. Seconds remaining. Derp, derp. I, I've also noticed he's been struggling a little bit in the early game. Reserve he's always time. he's always a strong player later on, especially on Eventual Spirit, um, which hey, maybe they're even going to pick it up this game. Um, but he's he's been struggling early on. But Relic Sleaze on Goody, they've been they've been they've been carrying some. Uh, Carrying them on their back, at least until the late game when Derp Derp gets involved. And I'm like, like I said, yeah, it's not that he's been he's been feeding or, or really really struggling, but he just hasn't he hasn't been making an impact, and that's that's not what you want from your offlaner. You want your offlaner to really have an impact. And then you take a look at North American Rejects, where I guess it's not really the offlaners, but MSS and Korok have just been playing out of their mind. They've just been setting the pace, just been running all over the game. And I'm actually really surprised to also see that they've Ten opened with Lena remaining. and Wisp here. And these are, this is a team that heavily values, well, they heavily value Zeus, but obviously they couldn't pick that up because Wheel did. Time. But they really like Lion. They really like Clock. So Clock got banned. Wheel knows that. Banded out, and they chose not to go with Lion, and they're going a very different route, but they are going to get the Shadow Fiend. Oh boy, this this is going to get good. So let, let's just catch up in the draft here, because I'm kind of getting off topic here. We've got Clockwork, Axe, Mag, 
and AM were banned out by wheel. We got Zeus and Bristleback picked up by them. Sniper, Troll, thank goodness both of them gone. <laughs> Jug and Storm Spirit removed by the North American Rejects. Then they picked up Lena, remaining. Wisp, and Shadow Fiend. So we know... Five seconds remaining. Uh, we don't know 100%, but we know that the Shadow Fiend's going to most likely Reserve be in the mid lane. We know the Wisp is going to be supporting. Lena could be core in the safe lane, but most likely support. We know that North Radiant American Rejects are going to have pick. to look to pick up an off laner and probably someone who's going to lane in the safe lane that's going to be able to port around with the Wisp. Is that going to be a Chaos Knight? Is it even going to be a Tiny? We'll have to wait and see. As for Wheel, well, we've got a Zeus and now a Witch Doctor, so that's most likely going to be their support duo. I don't think they're going to put the Zeus mid against the Shadow Fiend, but it's, it's a very real possibility. Bristleback, remaining. I don't know, they could safe lane or they could off lane it as well. Five um, seconds but we, we've got an interesting matchup here because Bristleback does actually quite well against all Reserve three heroes time. on the side of North American Rejects right now. However, Shadow Fiend's minus armor actually hurts Bristleback quite a bit and uh, makes him not quite as tanky. And if you know if he's facing the Lena and he, get, he eats a Laguna to the face, it's going to hurt him just like... Just like it's going to hurt any other hero. So you have to you have to be a little bit careful about that if you're going to try to consider running uh, a safe lane bristleback. So that's why I think it's probably going to be in the off lane. I I don't know. It's it's tough because I, I think of Ix Mike and I think of how he hasn't been able to really have an impact and he's played. I believe it was uh, Bat Rider two games, and he played that Tide Hunter where he got the the Bloodstone, which is definitely an interesting pickup, but not not necessarily a bad one, but a very different pickup. But anyway, I just feel like he hasn't gotten involved. I know he's really good at playing the Clockwork. Unfortunately, Wheel banned it out immediately, so they weren't even gonna have the opportunity to, to pick that up. But they knew the North American Rejects really liked the Clockwork as well, and I feel like. If he wasn't able to get it going on the Bat Rider, and he's not able to get the Clockwork, I don't, I don't know if he's really going to be able to have that impact on Bristleback. He's, I don't, maybe suspend, maybe he was just in a little bit of a rut in those games in the group stages, but, and he's going to turn around here. But I don't know if Bristleback's that hero. Ten seconds I don't even, remaining. I don't even think it really fits his his play style. Obviously, he's a he's a hero. Five he's a player who can remaining. play everything, but, at the same time, I, I don't, I don't think it really fits Ix Mike. Urshaker was a pickup for for North American Rejects, and that that shakes things up for uh, <laughs> excuse the pun there. As well, where are we going to put this Urshaker? Is it going to be an off lane core Urshaker, or do we have that Lena playing as a core? Maybe, maybe we put the Lena in the mid lane, slide the Shadow Fiend to the safe lane, and we have Wisp Urshaker as a support. So we're waiting to pick up. An off laner. Night then you've got to pick up an off laner that's going to be able to, to TP around bang. with the the wisp. Maybe I think maybe you're better off just putting the Earthshaker in the off lane. I don't know. I'm I'm actually really interested to see what wheel bans here to remove from uh, the North American bang. Rejects hero pool here. But wheel picking up the Night Stalker, so it's not. Well, actually, I, it, it, hmm. We've seen we've seen Night Stalker getting played a little bit recently. We've seen we've seen it a couple times in the Canada Cup. We've seen remaining. it a couple times in, in pro play in the last couple days. Primarily Five getting played as a four. Remaining. So that makes me think that this Night Stalker is a four as well, time. which means the Zeus is probably going to be in the mid lane. And the Witch Doctor is going to be playing the 5, Bristleback off lane. Pick. Broodmother gets banned. Huh. Do they think the Wisp and the Earthshaker are going to be fine together? Or maybe the Wisp is just there to keep the Shadow Fiend alive all the time? I, I, I mean, I get that. I get that thought process as you go on later and later into the game. And, and certainly in the team fights, but Ten seconds I feel like you, you, if you're going to pick up the Wisp, you should always be threatening with a relocate with someone. Five seconds remaining. And I, I just don't feel like they've got a hero there. So what are they going to pick? 
Result. I mean, obviously, CK, Tiny, anything like that comes to mind. Ursa is going to be the pick, so that's a, that's the third one out of the, the three that I was going to potentially mention there. So we are going to see the Wisp-Ursa combo. But I am a little surprised, a little surprised that the, the Broodmama got banned by Wheel there. I guess Wheel kind of struggled to deal with it. With their lineup, only the Bristleback would have been able to, to handle the Brood. Tinker. And well, we're going to see a Tinker come out for Wheel. This is going to be an interesting game because now, now we've got the Tinker, so we know Wheel could very well go late in this game. But do they have the stronger late game? I don't think they do. Going up against Ursa, Shadow Fiend, and Lena. Lena's going to scale well. I don't know. This is this is actually this is going to be a good one. This is really going to be a good one because I think we've got an interesting draft here coming up from Wheel. And certainly they're no strangers to picking different heroes. We didn't see that this game, but you take a look at their group stage and group stage and they picked Bloodseeker one game. They picked Coddle, remember Ten playing uh, they picked remaining. Coddle against um, Troll Warlord. They ended up losing Five that game, but remaining. still there it's a different pick and then they picked uh, oh the Razor and the Luna. Luna's not really that uncommon. Razor, he's all, he's not that common either, but he's, he's I guess he's a little bit of an unusual pick. So, so they're definitely willing to to pick a bunch of different heroes. And we didn't see that this game, but but it looks like they're going to be running the Night Stalker in the off lane. But before we get to that, let's introduce the teams and the players. On the Radiant side, we have the North American Rejects. They finished 3-0 in their group, and well, they're looking to, to stay undefeated here. And they've got Ush playing the Shadow Fiend. Fogged is going to be on the Wisp. Chad, uh-oh. Uh, I know you guys can't see this. Okay, whatever. Um... It's all fixed. Chad's going to be playing on the Lena. He was, he's actually been playing well this tournament. Korok is going to be on the Ursa. And Perfect Time is going to be on the Earthshaker. As for our dire, dire side, we've got Wheel Wreck while whistling. Our runner's up from last season. Sleazel's going to be taking control of the Bristleback. Relic is going to be on the Tinker. Goody is going to be on the Witch Doctor. Derp Derp. It's going to be on the Zeus. And IX Mike's going to be taking control begins. of the Night Stalker. That's what I like to see. Smart Much better money. pick for him than, than a, a Bristleback. As uh, oh, he needs to move his little feet faster. There we go. Gets in front of the block and then misses it immediately. But he gets it back. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just going to look away from IX Mike because he's, he's, he's failing the block under pressure here. Mid block looks to be looks to be about even though, but uh, for our lanes looks like we're gonna have the Earthshaker indeed taking uh, his hero piece there up into the top lane, and he's gonna be going up against Zeus, Bristleback, and Witch Doctor. So it's gonna be defensive tri lane. In the mid lane we're gonna have Shadow Fiend going up against Tinker. Bottom lane we actually may even have our first blood. It's Ix Mike getting caught out there. My How did that happen? He must have got blood. stunned by the Lena. I don't. That's actually quite unusual to die to these two heroes. But uh, we've got the Ursa the and the Lena going up against the Night Stalker as Ix Mike just walked Fear in. Quiet's magic. And wow, well, Chad almost got the stun off there before the silence. Thog just going to be kind of hanging around in the mid lane, but mainly just doing a bunch of stacking for the Shadow Fiend as. The, well, they know they're going up against Night Stalker in the bottom lane, and I think they feel pretty pretty confident with the Lena being able to zone out the Night Stalker by herself. Doesn't really need the Wisp down there. The Wisp is going to be better off controlling the mid lane as we see Fog actually coming out of the jungle to uh, to put a little bit of pressure onto Relic. Ix Mike does have this Observer Ward spotting out into the jungle. That's going to help him, but Chad's got one as well to help him harass and push Ix Mike back. And Night Stalker, one of those heroes that really wants XP. Gold, yeah, is nice, but he really needs XP. Kind of similar to Spirit Breaker in that regard. As, uh, they're going to make sure that they, they force IX Mike back so he gets as little XP as possible. 
Bush is off to a pretty good start already. It's sitting at 9 and 4 CS right now, ahead of the Tinker, who's only at 8 0. And it's not actually fair. We should compare the CS uh, now as Ush is. Oh, he is going to get it. So 12 and 4 to 8 0. Oh, Ush off to a pretty good start, but perfect time. He's going to get stunned up in the top lane here. He's going to get the Fissure off. Stop. He's not going to be able to get back. And he's going to take a false Sleazel. Survived with 9 HP from that last tower shot. <laughs> Now we're going to see the courier f deliver some items here for us. Just, he's just going to be bottle crowing. As uh, Fog looks like he's going to be sitting down here in the bottom lane trying to set something up onto Ix Mike. As he's going to tether onto Korok and they're just going to dive right past the tower right onto Ix Mike. And there's no way he's going to survive there. Good play there from Fog hiding in the fog. And, uh, and then popping out giving that Ursa that burst of speed to just run straight at the Night Stalker and punish him. As Ike's Mike just going to TP down there one more time. Take a look at his move speed. Night Stalker Dyer's always considered one of those really fast attack. heroes, but he's at 295. Of course, it's daytime and he doesn't have boots. Whereas you look at Korok, he's got phase boots. Those activate is at 417. Add um, the Wist Tether on there. He's moving even faster. Ike's Mike didn't, didn't stand a chance. It's Korok? Surprisingly, as. Distance himself, distance himself already from the Bristleback. Korok sitting at 27 and 7 CS, and I don't know what's going on up here in the top lane, but Sleazel is at 18 and 1. I, and I don't think it's been the Earthshaker being able to contest. The Earthshaker actually does have two denies, but. I don't know what's going on. That's, that's really low CS coming out from the, the Bristleback. I have to go back and take a look Denied. at that in the replay, but... Well, Korok's gonna dive past the tower once again on Ix Mike, but by the time he was gonna catch him there, he was just a little bit too deep for his liking, and... Well, definitely the right call is Derp Derp was making a rotation down here. Derp Derp's sitting at level 3, so he does have that level 2 lightning bolt, and that definitely hurts. Not as much as the level 4 one, of course, but... It uh, hits pretty damn hard. And with it now being nighttime, Ix Mike should be in a better position here in the bottom lane. But I think he may actually try to, to bait Korok in here and then try to turn something around. As you see, Derp Derp staying back. That's exactly what they're going to try to do. They sense a dive coming onto Ix Mike here. And now they're just going to try to set it up, make them dive past the tower and try to turn the fight around. But we do have a wrap around here in the mid lane. It's perfect time trying to set up a kill here onto Relic. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Is the Shadow Peak? Just goes back to the jungle, farming up, uh, farming up these camps that were already prepared by Fogged a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, we do have a little bit of a pause here. I ping. So I just want to bring this up. This is a hundred. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's MSS. Yeah, it's MSS. Yeah, he went, he went by that name in the group stage, but I just, I just wanted to make sure before I actually said it was MSS that it was indeed MSS. So MSS is uh, playing the Earthshaker as perfect time. And uh, yeah, that's what I expected, but just wanted to be sure. Hopefully this lag will clear here in a second. But I have to say, so far... I, I mean, I don't know what's going on with the Bristleback in the top lane as, as he's been struggling with last hits, but... So far, North American Rejects off to a pretty damn good start. They've done a decent job zoning out Ix Mike, although he's hit level 5. So he started to get a little bit more XP. But still, they've managed to, to get better farm. 38 CS on the Ursa, 36 on the Shadow Fiend. And you look at the top two on Wheel, and it's 25 on the Bristleback, and just 19 on uh, on the Tinker.
Hmm. Okay, so yeah, everyone having a little bit of a little bit of lag there, a little bit of pack of loss, 150 ping. Uh, so, you know what, I, I take a look at the chat and it's like, uh oh, fail fish, here we go. But you know what, it, it's strong, it's not, it's not the D word. And, and, you know, the admin's even just confirming it here. It's, it's the server. It's the Valve server, it's applying to everyone. I actually can't check ping, but... Because uh, I'm casting through Dota TV, but obviously they're they're having a little bit of ping issues here, and hopefully this will just clear up in a second. Just... I'm kind of running out of things to talk about with this game. It's right now it's it's looking very North American Rejects favored. You know the Wisp, the Wisp, uh, Wisp Kunko, Wisp Ursa is getting the getting the ball rolling, and. It's going to really come down to whether or not they can get some effective relocate ganks in their first one or two relocates. And if they can, then they're going to be in a really good position. They may and probably will look to gank the top lane, probably get a kill on the bristleback. And, you know, they certainly have enough damage to bring back the bristle, bring down the bristleback. And you think about how tanky bristleback is, you think maybe you want to go after someone a little bit safer. But the reason I say they're probably going to go with the Bristleback is right now we've got our Earthshaker in the mid lane as he was rotating for a potential gank onto Relic. Didn't didn't really pan out, so he went and soaked up the mid lane as Ush just farmed this one stack and he's going to go farm this other stack. But after this, Ush is going to rotate back to the mid lane and we're going to have MSS rotate back up to the top lane. And we're only three and a half on Fogged right now, but once he gets six... What they'll probably do is they'll relocate up to the top lane on the back of a fissure coming up from MSS onto the bristleback. So he won't be able to run away and he'll just be kind of stuck there uh, when the relocate's coming in. And uh, then, you know, if they're able to get on him, they should be able to bring him down. They may, may even try to sneak chat up there as well. It's kind of devoting four heroes towards that gank, but I think it would be very, very valuable for them to go for it. Um, the other possibility is a potential gank on Relic, trying to set him back from getting his Boots of Travel. It really will depend on when Fogged hits six for that, though. I think that we're probably going to have the Boots of Travel coming out earlier on Relic than, uh, than that six is going to come on board for Fogged. But we'll see. You know, uh, the farm hasn't been the best for Relic thus far. Certainly it'll pick up, but, and we haven't, haven't checked any stacks here in the jungle and it doesn't look like there are any. Oh, there's a double here. So he's got those, that one stack, to help accelerate his farm, but, I don't know, I think, I think the boots of travels are still going to be coming along nicely. At, at a decent time and uh, for that I think that Fogged is his six timing it, it really depends how much XP he's gonna get down here as well as I'm pretty sure they're gonna uh, Chad Chad's gonna be sitting here in the lane for the most part so Fogged is gonna get three three man XP in the lane at best This chat. So Ike Mike said, our Peruvian is doubly affected. And Korak says, that's the risk you take. Ah, oh, these guys. Well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Dota, it wouldn't be esports with connection issues from time to time. It just sucks that it's it's with the North American rejects every time. Cause I was I was super hyped going into this, and this is kind of it's kind of taking the hype away. It'll come back though. It'll come back.
Ja. Well, the, you know, Ash says, I doubt loading will help. Uh, probably better off waiting. The one, the one thing that uh, uh, loading could help with is that you could just end up getting a different server. And yeah, thanks, Mike. Says, Switching servers probably helps. And uh, he could be just referring to East versus West there. But also, you know, when you connect to the East server servers, it's it is servers. It's not just one server. So this could just be one server on the East uh, having a hiccup. But, you know, n knowing Dota 2 and Valve's kind of track record with the USE servers, <laughs> this is definitely par for the course. I completely missed what was said, but everyone's... Maybe it's just patch time. Oh, God. All right, I'm, I'm banking on the fact that I think it's going to be Friday. I'm banking on it. Tell you right now, not 100% prepared if all of a sudden the patch goes down right now. Not as prepared as I'd like to be. At least. Well, it looks like they're going to try to load, so I'm going to throw it to music while, uh, while they get the, all this sorted out. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. back as the, the lag seems to have died down a little bit or at least the packet loss has ping's going to be a little bit higher for players but they're, they're alright with playing with it as we're going we're gonna to try to get our minds focused back on this game as we've got the North American rejects off to a pretty damn good start and we're just waiting to see what this earth uh, can do with the Wisp and well, it looks like they're gonna try to get something done right now. I thought they were just going to the jungle, but they're actually gonna smoke up, try to go for a kill as Korok may just run right into Derp Derp here. Dyer's but oh, Derp Derp not attack. committing for that. Uh... Oh my, jeez. I mean, I guess he he's okay with the move speed, but he's gotta be a little careful of the phase boots on that Ursa. I'll back away. I'll place the, uh, an Observer Ward there as well to spot out any future runes yeah. that are gonna spawn up. See how Sleazel's doing in the top lane is he's he started to recover a little bit in terms of CS, get himself back in this game. Ix Mike unfortunately getting forced all the way back to Fountain, but he'll be back there in just a second. And Derp Derp, you're gonna be stacking these ancients as he's already got it doubled, and it's gonna be a triple in no time here. Relic almost done his soul ring, and then he starts working towards that, those boots of travel. You see now, Goody doing a lot more of the stacking, and I'm even getting a little bit of lag here. Go 
Yeah, my. I can I can feel it being jittery. So. Hopefully we're not we're not gonna get lag on on Dota TV. Unfortunately, we have run into that before. But Ash needs to be careful here. A little bit of a gank getting set up here by Wheel. Oh. Their opportunity was there just for maybe a second, but they hesitated and chose to back away. A little bit of wasted time for Ix Mike here. Is maybe he'll just head back to the bottom lane and sit there and try to get six. Six were not really that important on the Night Stalker, um, especially at this time. Um, but it's about to be daytime anyways, so uh, his effectiveness is going to kind of die off. Uh, he really wants to be hitting 7, that's a real big power spike for him. As MSS is going to get snotted up here by Sleazel, but Fogged and Chad are up here as well, and Sleazel's going to get stunned up, and he's going to go down when MSS drops the hammer with the big Echo Slam. Goody now makes the rotation over, but he gets pinged out immediately. And, well, these three heroes are going to run right at him. Cast comes out, but they Dyer's do a nice little spread there to make sure it doesn't bounce around. Fortunately, the LSA is going to be off the mark. Dragon Slave does hit. Drops Goody down to about 200 HP. But North American Rejects won't be able to get the kill, and unfortunately... Yeah, we're going to have another pause. Even I was feeling that through Dota TV. Uh, well, the other thing, it's down. Yeah, Mott's saying he was lagging a bit too. Oh well, we're gonna go. And uh, we're gonna try to get back in this as Korok... ...sees, so well, he actually doesn't see, but he, he's gotta know Ix Mike's probably close. And Ix Mike knows now, as he just walks into the pit, sees Korok, Who's doing Roche and now he's on low HP. Ix Mike slows him with the void, tries to chase him down. Roche says, nah, -uh. bashes him. And Goody's still gonna TP down here and get the kill with the cask and a death ward. Good play there from Goody, but. Oh, Roche. Roche making the play, stunning up Ix Mike. And I, you know, I said, things have not been going well for Ix Mike. And that sums up his tournament thus far. <laughs> that one play. Just, just not going well. Things just not going well for him. Ush did just pick up a, a blink dagger. Noir's fogged. Four Radiant's and a half still. Tower is so under a long attack. way from six as we see Relic getting pretty damn close to finishing that boots of travel. They're going to have to try and set up a gank here on him prior to that relocate. And you know what? Maybe they're going to be able to. Chad getting close to six, but is that even going to come in time? I think it will. It should. But I think Ix Mike knows that uh, the pressure is going to be on the Tinker soon. As you want to kill him before he gets those boots of travels up. Obviously he's still vulnerable until uh, he gets the blink dagger up after the boots of travel. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot harder to... Uh, or he's got a lot more options available to him when he has the boots of travel. He's definitely a lot more slippery. But in the bottom lane, Ix Mike has been fissured off and... The North American Rejects are going to find another kill. And with that, they're going to move attack. down to the bottom lane, try to Radiant's push down this tier 1 tower. I put Fog to almost at level 5. And now we have a Blink Dagger getting picked up by the Ursa as well. As Korok's going to jump on into the Roche Pit with it. As this team will continue to, to somewhat push the bottom tier 1 tower. But now, with the rotation, it's definitely very, very clear that Korok's in there doing Roche and Goody. From the high ground, it's going to drop a Death Ward down in there. Should give him vision, but also it's going to deal some good damage to Korok. And now Chad needs to be careful. As Sleazel's TP down here, and he's going to be hunting down that Luna, uh, Lena. But Ush on the high ground with the big Requiem. Oh my goodness, it's going to be a triple for the side of the North American Rede Rejects. Chad's still low, but he'll be able to get out of there. The March of the Machines isn't going to finish him off. Korok in pursuit of Relic. Relic trying to run away. He has to dodge and relocate. He does so, but he does so into Korok, and he cleans up that kill, and Ush, with that relocate, is able to find the kill on the Zeus as well. It's a five-man wipe. North American rejects. You know, I said it was going to be important what they're able to do with their first relocate, but they were already they were always looking looking pretty damn good before that relocate even came out, but they still got a good use out of it, making sure that they got an extra kill through a pickoff. And now, 
Dyer's middle tower. We'll definitely, uh, definitely on the back foot here. They've got to start turning this game around. Ix Mike zero four and one right now in the Night Stalker. Don't know if he's going to be able to do it. Derp derp zero one and zero, but I don't know. I don't know if the, the Zeus is going to be able to do it. Maybe it's going to all be on the back of Goody and just trying to to counter gank everything. And it's just everyone just kind of pivot around Relic and hope that he's able to, to at least draw this game out until they're able to get further and further in. Even look at Sleazel. Yeah, he was recovering for a little bit there, but he's still so far behind. He's 20 CS behind the Ursa. He's going to get a lot of gold here from, uh, from killing this Ancient stack. But still. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He, he should he should basically be even and then have the ancient stack to put him ahead take a look at MSS see how well he's doing he's sitting at 1300 gold he's getting close to his blink dagger and with that it's gonna Dyer's the heroes on this radiant side are gonna get really really scary Korok getting that tower down real low down to 8 HP nice timing Dyer's there from Osh with his auto attack fallen. making sure that he gets that without uh, the heroes on the side of wheel having a chance to deny it. But both Ush and Korok will be perfectly fine here. Fog is there as well though, to assist if needed. Now Ush will make that rotation through the jungle, just continually farming, and now I think Fog is going to go back to meet up with Korok. He's maybe considering going on Ix Mike. Goody was there, but now he's just TP'd up to the top lane as we've got three heroes up here for wheel. And do they know that Chad is hanging out here, or do they just think it's MSS? They actually know it's Chad because of an Observer Ward here. Chad just placed an Observer Ward of his own, even placed a Sentry to make sure that they hadn't spotted this rotation, but that Sentry doesn't cover this location. So they should they should know that there's an Observer Ward there. So expect that to be countered, and Derp Derp's probably going to check for a second. Yep, he's going to do just that. It's a good awareness of their opponent's... Uh, Inventory constantly checking every hero, but especially the supports on the other team. Every every single time you get vision of your opponent, you should always check their inventory. Just constantly jump around the map like this when you're playing. It's constantly checking for any kind of changes. Just just because you want to know, like, hey, if this hero he's gonna go in the fog for a split second, he's at two observer wards and he drops down to one. You know there's a ward there, but perfect time. MSS will get back far enough as Chad attack. and Fog will TP on in to, to try and protect him, but the heat seeking missiles will find him. So we'll find a kill on MSS there, and that's going to set him back. He was getting pretty damn close attack. to his blink dagger. It's going to set him back a little bit, but not that much. As we wait the, uh, the second relocate of the game. Relic sitting at 1700 gold right now. Our Blink Dagger is going to be coming out soon. Now would be a good time to gank him as well, but they got to find him. That's the toughy. That's the tough part. How do you, how do you get to him? How do you punish him for being overextended when he's going to be in the jungle for the most part? And when he's not there, he's going to probably be up on his high ground in the mid. It's hard to exploit that. So I said it's, it's a lot easier to to get that gank. Uh, before he gets the boots to travel and set set him back on his travels timing, rather than try and set him back on his blink dagger timing, he's a lot more slippery with the with the travels. And then, of course, once he gets the blink dagger, very very difficult to gank a tinker. You have to be very um, middle tower is under predictive attack. on where he's going to go and set everything up ahead of time. You can't go and react to where he's going. You have to be preemptive with your rotations and with your movements and setting up that gank so that he comes to you but he doesn't know that he's coming to you. We're going to have the relocate up in the top lane. They're going to try to go on Derp Derp and they're going to fissure him up. It is just going to be the Earthshaker and the Wisp but they easily get the kill there. So MSS sitting at 2200 gold now so the Blink Dagger just 50 gold away and they will both uh, come back so they're not going to leave MSS in, up in the top lane as so they're maybe going to try to set up a kill here. His pings came out onto Sleazel, who just made his way up to the top room, which uh, he'll bottle up, and Ix Mike is set left with an empty bottle. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Now, Ush, uh, a little bit of an interesting positioning here that he put himself in. He's really relying on uh, being able to get that blink dagger off. 
It's, it's maybe a little bit of a risky play going up against a hero like Zeus who can pop that Thunder God's Wrath and really basically get him stuck there. Um, so he's not really able to get back to his team. It's a kind of put himself in a little bit of a weird position. It's perfectly fine because he has the Blink Dagger, but when something like a Thunder God's Wrath comes out that you can't blink, then you can easily get stuck in that position and not be able to blink back. Maybe just just playing a little a little bit res reckless and not really uh, respecting the fact that Thunder God's Wrath is on the board. Is under attack. But Wheel didn't Dyer's punish him for it. They didn't have enough attack. heroes in position at the at the moment to drop him anyways. And I don't think they wanted to commit to a, to a kill like that. But we are going to find a kill here on Relic. The relocate came in and Korok Dyer's did get the kill. I think MSS and Chad were going to be able to hunt down a tinker and get the kill on him anyways. Cask is going to come out here bouncing fallen. around to a bunch of them. They're actually going to relocate all the way back to the bottom lane. And that unfortunately leaves MSS and Chad maybe a little bit overextended, but they're going to be able to pull out just in time. The Sleazel, Goody, and Derp Derp were, were hoping for a kill there, but it wasn't meant to be. Dyer's bottom tower is Triple under attack. Ah, Hikes Mike seems, seems lost this game. And I... I don't know how he gets back in this. He's... He was, in a, he was in a very difficult lane. On top of that, he, he died a few times. <laughs> Certainly, the first blood should have been preventable. As for uh, as for some of the other ones with the dives, it's it's very very hard to 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 not die in a situation like that. You've got to you got to be extremely careful with your positioning because the the move speed differential is so huge. And certainly when all of a sudden Fog comes out of nowhere and tethers the Ursa so he's even faster and he's able to, to run right at you and dive the tower, it's, it's very hard to be able to position yourself in a spot where you're able to get as much as you can in the lane and be out of... Uh, be out of a vulnerable position that you can get punished for here. His MSS is going to get gone on here, did blink away, but... Ix Mike was there to catch him with the void, and Real was able to kill him before the, the TP went off. The MSS does take a fall, but he do already has that blink dagger, so it's not really going to set him back that much. But the gold is definitely welcomed on the side of Wheel. As we switch over to the net worth right now, we can see they're they're definitely behind. The question is, will the North American rejects be able to punish Wheel? They've got a shadow fiend, four thousand net worth above anyone on the side of wheel. They've got Nurser, 2,000 ahead of everyone else as well. But it's very, very hard to punish when there's a Tinker on the other side. We saw just how hard it is to push uphill and, and really punish a team um, that has a Tinker in our match between uh, that, that, that little bit of a weird match that we had between Ehug and Not Today, the, the tiebreaker match. We saw how difficult that can be. Smash was always there with the March of the Machines, and it's very difficult to push uphill into it. There are counterplays. There are, you know, you could pick up a blade mail. That's certainly a way that you can drop the uh, drop the tinkers. We're gonna see a smoke come out from the North American reject. It's just gonna be three of them. And so they're gonna oh, they're gonna go on the mid lane here as Relic has just TP'd on into the creeps, and we see the value of this Earthshaker and him being able to long range fissure. Relic, as soon as he TPs on in with the creep, and you would assume that Relic had that the blink shift queued there, but he might not have, because he thought he was relatively safe, and Goody thought he was safe here as well, but the Fissure's there, and Osha's there, blinking on in as the Shadow Fiend, and they find themselves another kill, and while that was going on, Korok and Fogged drop Roche, and now they've got an Aegis on their Ursa once again. You can't help but feel that North American Rejects are just... They're in full control of this game right now. And it's going to have to be something big from Wheel. I I don't know. I, I almost feel like Wheel just has to play well. And North American Rejects have to make a big mistake. They've got to make a big mistake. They have to overextend, maybe with a relocate. Maybe just with chasing. And get punished really hard for it. They have to basically misplay 
into Wheel just playing properly. And that's probably the only way that Wheel's going to get Dyer's back in this game. Tower is under Otherwise, it's going to be a very, very, very slow grind for them to try and crawl back the deficit that they have right now. And let's take a look at that deficit Dyer's as we see. Tower has fallen. We're almost at 10k in favor of the North American Rejects, and you can see they've pretty much been ahead the entire time, which is actually funny because it almost even shows that they were ahead from the start. Well, the Volvo police. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a relocate down to the bottom lane as they're going to try and jump on Derp Derp, but Derp Derp's just going to TP away. And that's that's the downside when you're a Wisp Versa. With the change, yeah, although it was a while ago, with the change to Tether and it not having the mini stun, you're not able to stop TPs, and that was a huge change. So IX Mike's going to get picked off here. Demonstrates once again is there with the Fissure at the key moment. And will North American Rejects be able to push this mid tier too? As MSS is going to blink up into the jungle and find Sleazel. Try to chase him down, but mainly just to get some good damage in us. We already have a Scotty up on Ush. Look at this positioning. Look at this confidence coming out from the North American Rejects. They know how much control they have. They know how much space they have is Ush. He knew. He knew that Thunder God's Wrath is coming out. BK beat at the proper time. And now he's he was in a little bit of a man fight there, but TP'd away. While that was going on, Korok found a kill on Goody in the bottom lane. Now he's gonna look to put some pressure on this bottom tier two, but now with the heroes rotating away from mid, he's probably just gonna back away and get some farm up on the jungle, or maybe not. He's actually possibly considering going on Sleazel here. But I think, yeah, I think he'll think better of it and back away. Maybe with Fogs coming, they'll, they'll try for it, but they don't know IX Mike's close as well. MSS is going to make his way down there as well. He's picked up a Staff of Wizardry, probably going for a 4 Staff. Yul Scepter also valuable in our Shaker though. Sleazel once again trying to bring down one of these one of these ancient camps. And he'll be able to do so. The question is how much of the XP is going to be stolen? I realize I may have just said something weird. I, I feel like there's something about XP from ancient camps and being able to steal it. I feel like I should definitely know this. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh well, we won't see it anyways. This Korok's just going to be able to to drop the ancient camp himself, and we're going to get a little bit of leech from the supports, but leech from uh, their own ally destroying it, no, rather than trying to take it from the enemy. Dyer's Azush is going to bring down this mid tier two tower, and his teammates are already Dyer's gathering for uh, potentially putting pressure on the bottom tier two. And Relic is there, laying down the march of the machines. He needs to be careful as Ush is off to his side, but he's not the only one. We got Chad as well, and Chad just finished a Yule Scepter. So if he manages to catch out the Tinker with the Yules, they can easily drop him. As look, they're, they're putting themselves in position here to make sure that Relic isn't able to put himself in position Dyer's to lay down the march of the machines. And as a result, this should be an easy tier 2 tower for them to take. And then Dyer's Chad even pinging out the, the tier 2 tower in the top. So obviously that's next on their uh, on their to-do list. But first fallen. they've got to defend mid here. And Ush will just come in and gladly accept that farm. And MSS is going to be doing uh, a little bit of creep management in the top lane. Chad will eventually make his way up there, but he's a damn fast Lena. 425 move speed. Tranquils and Yules. Ridiculous. Fog. He's he's a fast little ball of light, I guess. He's picked up haste and he just tethers in to uh, to Korok there. He's getting a kill on Sleazel. Important pick off. It was also important that Relic got a kill, and we didn't see it, but he got a kill in the bottom. As he he dropped Chad. He 
Let's uh, quickly cycle through our items here and our heroes. See what we've got. We've got a Blink Dagger, BKB Scotty, and now we've got a Demon Edge on Ush. Daedalus, I guess? Oh, actually, it could be an MKB to counter the, um... Uh, the laser from the Tinker. As for the Wisp, we've got an Urn, Tranquils, and, and the making of, an, of a mech. It's actually getting pretty damn close to being able to just buy the, the rest of the mech. He's got quite a bit of gold on hand. We just looked at Chad, so we know what he has. As for Korok, Blink, BKB, Abyssal. There's 1300 gold. And of course he's got a, just a, a normal Morbid Basque. And then MSS, Dyer's the Blink, and he, he did finish attack. that 4 staff. Move on to the Dire side, Derp Derp. Got a staff of Wizardry. Ix Mike just has an urn. Doesn't really have much of anything. As we may have an engage here. It is an MKB finished by the Shadow Fiend before we go in here. Cask is going to stun up Chad at the bottom here. Looks like he's going to be the first one to fall to start this team fight off. He lays down a nice stun. And Korok immediately comes in cleaning up a kill. Then he chases down Derp Derp getting another. So it's a double for him. But unfortunately he does lose his Wisp as Relic comes in from behind. Picks him off. But now Sleezel in a whole lot of trouble. Korok is going to get the kill there. That's a triple for him. He did have a little bit of help there from Ush and, and MSS, but it's a team game. And they'll be certainly happy with, with killing four heroes on the other side. They just lost their two supports. Definitely a worthwhile trade. Surely they would have w wished that they had killed Relic. Dyer's middle tower is under um, attack. Maybe they would have exchanged one of those other kills for Relic, no problem. Maybe even the kill on Sleasel. Just because a kill on Relic would have allowed them to maybe do a little bit more damage pushing up to the high ground. But you know what? They put pressure in the mid tier 3. Relic was there defending. Dyer's that created some space for this, this top push. And then Dyer's they back. Top tower has but fallen. they don't straight away back. They back to the tier 2 and take it down instead. So they do. They are able to drop a, a tower. Now Chad and MSS are going to find a kill on Derp Derp. Relic once again throwing in those heat-seeking missiles, just dealing a little bit of extra damage, and why not? You've got unlimited mana. Invisibility. As for Relic, what does he have? He's got a dag on one, and he's going for a bloodstone next. He pretty much has enough to finish that. He's got a blink dagger, boots of travel, your typical tinker items. Sleazy's got a halberd and a vanguard. Also plate mail. Probably AC to counter the, the Shadow Fiend Aura. Goodies finished his Egg Scepter. I have no idea how he's gotten enough gold to do so, but he's finished an Egg Scepter. Dyer's middle tower is Compare under attack. his net worth with the likes of the Lena and the Wisp. And, th and then just think of the map control and how much more map control the North American Rejects have. Effectively, more map control means more s stuff to farm. We see right now they're all inside the dire jungle. They farmed up these camps. That means that's gold that's gone the way of North American rejects. That's also gold that Wheel's not able to take themselves. So I don't know how, but Goody Illusion. somehow has managed to get an Egg Scepter on the Witch Doctor. So good play coming up from him. I, I spoke about it in the draft. He's been playing really well all tournament long. So definitely not uh, missing a beat here. His relic will finish the, the bloodstone. Oh, look at it go! As we just see here, as North American rejects are seem to be perfectly fine with farming here. Maybe they're waiting for Roche. That's probably the case. They've got an illusion and they're scouting it right now. But maybe they'll they'll go as soon as Roche is up. They'll go in, get the Aegis, and then they'll look to push high ground. And that's definitely the the safest play and, and probably the, the correct call. Wish me. Maybe we'll extend here. I don't think he's going to die, but it's a question of whether or not they can force him to pop a BKB. You got that charge down by one second. Not going to be the case. They will find an Observer Ward. They will bring that down. But Ush is just be able to create so much space here as Wheel just so. So afraid to really push out of their base, and it's hard. 
Unless you know exactly where all those enemy heroes are, it's very, very hard to push out your base. Either way, we will see Roche go down, as Korok's going to get the Aegis, and I imagine Fog, yep, Fog is going to be holding on to the cheese. This is the third time Roche has gone down. Now I've got three heroes from the side of the North American Rejects looking to push in the bottom lane. The Ursa and the Wisp not with them, but they're going to be heading up now. Let's so look to break this high ground. Maybe Korok goes and, and puts pressure on the mid lane with Fogged. That way you get kind of the three heroes pushing in the bottom lane. If there is kind of an engage, you can relocate in. And then when Fogs, when the relocate ends, Fog still isn't that far. You can come on over back into the fight very, very quickly. And that way you're you're able to to kind of spread the opponent's thing. There can't be there can't be a double stacked march of the machines in two lanes at once. So you've gotta you've gotta kinda of be splitting and putting pressure on two lanes if you wanna deal any kind of structure damage to a team that's got a, got a tinker. This Korok actually blinked on in. Fisher came out but didn't find the target. And that actually put Korok in a little bit of a vulnerable situation. So he's going to go down and they lose the Aegis. Now MSS jumps on in, lays down the Echo. Not very good. I think it did hit two heroes, but doing basically no damage. No targets within it. And now North American Rejects maybe tried to force this a little bit too hard. And this is the hard part about trying to push uphill against a Tinker. You take these situations that maybe you're not 100% ideal because it's the only ones you're getting. But Korok's going to look to make good on it as he managed to drop Relic and there's, there is a buyback available. The tier 3 has gone down but with Korok dying I don't think a buyback is going to even be necessary. Never mind. Relic says otherwise as he's going to buy back in the game and now the North American Rejects are going to try to run away. Relic landing one Heatseeker missile, second one will get the kill onto Chad. They'll also get a kill onto Fog. Will they be able to chase down Ush? Looks like it as Relic will rearm and then blink a little bit further fo forward. He's going to zap Bush, and they will get the kill, so great buyback there coming out from Relic. As he sensed that North uh, the North American Rejects were a little bit too committed despite losing their Kor uh, their Korok, their, their Ursa. And he bought back and aggressive TP was able to, to pick off some kills there. Great play from Relic, recognizing that situation. Certainly I didn't recognize it and I have the the all-seeing eye. And I've got, I'm the eye in the sky. I can see everything as an observer. Well, like we'll uh, farm up the Radiant Jungle now that he's got the opportunity to do so. Certainly doesn't want to go to the bottom lane and take this farm from Ike Mike, who definitely needs it. He's sitting at 2,700 gold and. Oh no, he might lose in here, he's not going to buy anything. So he just basically loses straight up 500 gold with getting picked off there. Once again, another relocate. Middle tower Coming out from attack. Fogged and they find a kill on the back of it. But still, they need to they need to bring down a set of racks. I, I don't think they 100% they need to. Like it's, it's do or die. But I think right now, take a look at the gold grab. You can tell they're, they're pretty damn far ahead. They feel like they should be able to win these fights and take a set of racks. And the only thing really stopping them is just the fact that there's a Tinker. And that March of the Machine does a ridiculous amount of damage. I... Hmm. This is tough because now we'll, like... You look at what Relic's doing right now, and he's he's not able to venture out. He's not able to, to constantly put pressure all over the map like a Tinker normally does. He's just kind of stuck rotating from lane to lane. Too too afraid to push out of the base, but just going from lane to lane, constantly laying down March of the Machines. And you take a look at the Observer Wards. You got this one. You got another one on the high ground because this one's about to expire. But you've got this spotting at the bottom lane, you got this one spotting just outside their base in the mid lane, and you got this one spotting just outside their base in the top lane. So they know when the push is coming, so that Relic can get there in time. And they know maybe when there's just one hero and they can maybe commit. 
but it's one of those situations where it's like those observer wards are, are, are great for keeping you defending but how does it push you out of your base how does it get more of the map going your way and allowing you to to transition from this position that you're in currently to a position that's going to help you win the game Well, we did have a buyback from the Witch Doctor. No, Ix Mike. They clearly knew Korok was there because they were running for him. But Korok was setting it all up. He just pops a BKB and just disintegrates Ix Mike, slashes him to bits with his claws. Oh, I almost get the pick on the courier there. 18 HP left on it. Well, North American Reject's gonna take another crack at going uphill. In this bottom lane is they're still pushed, they're still splitting. But never mind, they're gonna come on in with the relocate. They're gonna look to drop Sleazel first, but they just switched off of him to go after Goody instead, and they do get that kill, but unfortunately they are not able to finish off Sleazel, but while well, they switched to the relic, that's probably a better kill. And all MSS with the blink. Echo. We'll get them those much needed kills. The only one left alive is Ix Mike and he's gonna go down there as well. GG will finally get called. It's yeah, I think I think the North American rejects had this a long, long time ago. It was just that Tinker pick that kind of kept them in the game for so long. Or kept them from losing their base for so long. Not really in the game. But that that's gonna wrap it up for our first game. Probably not the, the most exciting game, as uh, most games with Tinkers unfortunately aren't. But we did see uh, Ursa, which is which is something that we don't see very often, so it's cool to see that. Um, we saw Ix Mike in the offlane with a Night Stalker. That's, that's, that's cool and interesting. Unfortunately, it did not work out for him at all. 1-10-6 and six was his record when it was all said and done. He's been having a real rough tournament. He's got he's got next game to try and turn it around. As Wheel, unfortunately, have fallen one nothing in this best of three, and they're they're gonna be on the ropes next game. Which should be starting, I don't know, probably five minutes, five or ten minutes. Not sure how long of a break they're uh, they're gonna be taking, but we'll be hopping into that game as soon as we can. In the meantime, take uh take the opportunity to hit the follow button on twitch.tv slash nizcast. Check out my Twitter at Nizcast and, and my YouTube, youtube.com slash Nizcast, where I upload all the VODs or everything I cast. And, uh, yeah, maybe go grab a drink, because we'll be back in probably about five minutes or so for game two.